Hey bitches and welcome back to another Fashion Blank video. That is my channel Fashion Blank and if you are new here thank you very much for coming here and checking out this video because why? Raja Gemini is one of my favorite queens. She is an absolute fashion icon and as you can see by the title we are going to talk about why that is so and we are going to review all 20 something looks that she has worn throughout the drag race history. So that's gonna be really fun. I have everything figured out what I'm gonna do and how we're gonna talk about it so I hope you're ready. And before we jump into it just subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and check out other content that I make. I think you might like it. Check out my Patreon and also leave suggestions down below because I would like to see what you what else you want me to react to. Does that make sense? It perfect does. Okay, let's go. For those that don't know, even though you probably do since you clicked on this video, <laughs> Raja Gemini is a contestant from season 3 of RuPaul's Drag Race and she won that season rightfully so. She was born in California but when she was 3 years old she moved to Indonesia and the reason I'm mentioning this is because just this year on the All-Star season she has performed a traditional Balinese dance which is she says not only for men or women it is actually for both so anybody can dance it and that's actually pretty pretty cool i did not know that i mean how would we know <laughs> but thanks to her we do and she seems to be very spiritual and very zen like very you know in balance with herself and i quite like that she's a very eccentric person she's funny she's witty and she is a fashion icon and now you might think why would you say that she's the biggest one and because i am claiming that i am claiming her to be the biggest fashion icon so Raja, if you're watching this you got it girl <laughs> The reason I'm claiming that is because Raja is the first actual fashion queen with the good knowledge of fashion. She can not only design an outfit, but she can also create it. She has an incredible, incredible runway walk for which she is very well known. <laughs> <laughs> she gives a, a, a totally different character and attitude every time she steps on the runway. She has a really good understanding of how to portray that. She's an absolutely great model and she can, in her words in season 3, pose you down. And she's also somebody who has been doing drag since the 90s. <laughs> so that is, it's been a very long time. And she has, been in the, she has been in the industry for a while and she has done TV and she was in more notable TV shows. She was on, since season three, she was on the uh, America's Next Top Model. She was a uh, Tyra Banks' makeup artist and she did makeup for the girls that competed there. So she has a pretty big resume and all of these things do give her a lot of experience, knowledge, and that is why she's good at what she does. Not only in drag, but also in fashion. She is the fashion icon, I'm telling you right here right now and I think you know that. So over the years as she, as she started working on TV she kind of built that reputation for herself as a makeup artist and then once she got on TV people got to know her as a drag or a performer as well and what else can you ask from her? She served us some amazing looks. In this particular video we are the only looks that we are not going to, to, to be talking about are the ones that were designed for performing so her dance outfit for all stars for the traditional dance or like that stand up routine where she had Carrie look uh, with the blood coming down on her. Like we're not gonna talk about it because that was not the actual runway theme. So we're just gonna talk about majority of others that were the actual theme. <laughs> And before we get into it, we need to address a few things. Because there are a few issues that we need to discuss about. First thing is time of the show. Because when she was on Drag Race, that was season 3 and it happened in 2011. It has been 11 years since then and show back then it was very much different than what it is today. Challenges were slightly different, behavior of the judges of the queens were different and the expectations were different. They have also had a lot of design challenges. They had probably like at least four of them where they, need, where they needed to create something on top of a few other challenges that where, they, that where the queens themselves would opt to make an outfit rather than just wear what they had because it seemed more appropriate for the challenge. Also don't forget that Rue back then would come, let's just take this one episode for example, he would come in the workroom, he'd be like, okay so you need to create three distinct hairstyles for three looks and they're like, okay got it. So they manage their time to, to fill it out properly so they have enough time for each look and then he revisits them, he's like, okay so you need to create an entire outfit made of hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all the time that you had figured out now doesn't matter at all because you have to squeeze this in. The second issue that we have 
is the money itself. Back then, queens did not have as many opportunities as, as they do have today because of the growth of the show. So not many of them were super rich or had many opportunities to earn money, so of course the look could be lackluster. And we also know by now that the show would sometimes give the queens one name of the category, for example, they might say I don't know, orange alert, which means that you would wear something orange, but they would pronounce it on the runway something else. So we would be like, that doesn't really fit fully. And so that also needs to be taken into account. And the third thing that we are going to discuss about as the last issue is the category itself. For example, if you're given the runway theme sporty drag, it's not gonna do as good probably as if you say history of drag. So in History of Drag you can really go fully extravagant, you can do any kind of <laughs> look really, you can do whatever. In Sporty Drag, although you can make a fashion, it's probably going not, not going to be fashionable because it is sporty. So that is the last thing to remember. However, all of those things can be worked around if you have one thing and that one thing is called taste. <laughs> <laughs> Raja has it, but a lot of people don't. And if you don't have fashion sense, if you don't have taste, you are going to struggle no matter what. No amount of money can help you if you take your idea and present it to the designer who will create your outfit, but your idea is shit. Like, <laughs> there's no other way of putting it. So taste is very much needed and Raja has a lot of good taste. All of the timestamps for this video will be in will be in the description. You can just scroll on through the to the bar and you can click on what you like. So do so do that. <laughs> because I just want to talk about a few things because I need to stress them out because that is the way we are judging this video. Now we can start with the first look. The entrance of Raja was quite controversial back then. Why, you might wonder. Well, it's because she looked the way she looked and she came with that eye mask and her face was covered and the queens were questioning her choice not to pad and not to wear a breastplate or something to create that illusion, that stereotypically female illusion. But to me, for somebody who didn't really know much about drag and for somebody who knew nobody on that season, I thought that she was quite interesting. I thought that she stood out and I thought she would be the one to watch out for because she just looked the most unique. So all the doubt that they had when they saw the look, her entrance look disappeared when she created the outfit for the actual runway theme, which was kind of like a design challenge you had to. So you would go to the thrift store, you would buy the clothing, you would dismantle it, and then you would recreate it, like create something that you like, and then you would accessorize it with the holiday items. So she did that and she created this beautiful piece, which to me, almost kind of looked like it could be a part of the Vivian Vest for 2006 collection. I think it was spring. I will put the pictures right here. You can see it yourself. It just screams to me that. It really does. The way jacket fits her shoulder is, is perfect. The way she paired it with the skirt is lovely. The accessories that she made, the headpiece that it, or the hairpiece, and the hair itself, that kind of dirty white color, it just, everything looks great. And we can also talk about her walk, which is never something to, to, to disregard, which was freaking cool. She can stomp the runway like nobody else. She really can. And also at the end when she just lay down on, at the end of the runway and just made that snow angel, it was like, she's whimsical. She's not just there to give you artificial model person, just regular model, however you stereotypically think of them. She's there as a regular person, and she's fun, and she's whimsical, and that's what was needed for us to see. And all doubt about her not being the look queen disappeared right away. Then we move into the second episode, or okay, I just need to tell you that when I say second episode, it was not actually a second episode, it was third, but I just put each look as one, two, three, four, five, six, so that I can put them in that order, but the actual episode was something else possibly for some of them. So for the second episode, actual third, <laughs> they need to kind of serve the futuristic look, and she went this, what the judges described, that was the C3PO look, and I totally see that, but for me it is definitely more so Metropolis. If you ever seen that movie, you would know. If you didn't, then you should watch it. <laughs> it really, literally gave me Metropolis. The way she walked down the runway was very, very appropriate. It was very appropriate and she just thinks about these things and she knows how to uh, portray them. So she thought, okay, I'm wearing this kind of robotic armor piece. I should also walk that way because she looked fierce in the face and in the attitude she would also pose that way. So when she would stop at a certain point and turn, it was not just a regular slight turn, 
it was stop and look at you. It was just bury yourself in the ground and turn. It was very robotic, it was very firm, very sturdy, and she knows what to do. And that is also a sign of somebody who is good at what they do, who is good at modeling and at posing and at serving you looks. Those long pointy nails, oh my god, she looked like perfection on stage. Okay, now we go to the next episode and we need to collect our thoughts really well because this is still, till today, one of the most iconic looks in history of Drag Race. And why? Because it was the actual art itself. She went this, as she said, with Marie Antoinette inspired look. When she turned that corner and revealed that perfectly painted white powdered face with slight blush and the hair the way it was styled, and the attitude that she portrayed, how she walked ever so slowly and how she opened that fan, started to open it from knees up, just slowly opening it and, and fanning herself. Oh my god, I just looking at it, I'm like, this is art itself. To take something big as, for example, she said, she is very much inspired by, by the French style and Rococo style. And I, I totally see that, but when we think of this, that style, we think about big dresses, hoop skirts, bell-shaped skirts. We think about the volume, we think about the richness and all of that. There's a lot of ruffles, over-the-top, extravagant looks, very royal. But she took that style and she made it and she simplified it. And it was, it was still intricate enough and it was still intriguing it was still absolutely gorgeous. It was everything that we needed for the category, which was, I believe, fabulous drag. And she looked truly, truly fabulous. It was the best look till that point, and it still remains one of the best looks today. It was such a beautifully tailored garment, and the corset, how it fitted on her, everything, and the way she posed, and how, oh my god, it was an actual art piece. It was very Dior. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was very Dior. It was stunning all around. That work is exquisite and I wish I knew the name of the person who created it because I would believe she probably had somebody else made it. I'm not sure who it is, so if you do know, let me know because it was absolute perfection. So we go to the next episode where online I found that the actual, allegedly, name of the runway theme was Best Drag. But on the runway itself, I think Rue Ru said that it's a favorite drag. So those two are very different things, so who knows what the queens were actually given for this theme. Raj is wearing this very simple look, and we keep our opinion truthful in this challenge, so I do have to say it's not my favorite, only because it's too small. Like, are we going to say that her walk was absolutely fabulous and once again better than everybody else's? It absolutely was. Her makeup, the hair, the neck piece, everything was perfection in that aspect but the look itself was lacking but because to me just to wear a bra essentially is not enough so i thought that she could have done something more especially when you have a category named best drag allegedly so i thought that she had better pieces till this point and after this point so i definitely would have chosen something else but to say that she didn't present it in the best possible way it would be a lie because she definitely did she could sell me anything. She could sell me this piece of uh, uh, earphones right now. She could sell me that if she wanted to. It's insane. Her amazing walk it w can never be disregarded. She can teach so many people so many things. Next up, we we have a runway theme, which was the, basically they had to make an outfit uh, based off of a cake that they were given. So Raja was obviously given a chocolate cake and she created this gorgeous, I believe, I believe from Velvet outfit and the shape of it and how it was styled, it was so, so good. The makeup was perfect for it. One of the judges said that it looked slightly spooky, but then he revealed that he only said it because he didn't know what else to give her as a fault. And I'm like, why would you even do that? Like, if you like it, you like it. But everything was perfect, except, and she says that, that her white undergarments are being shown to the judges, which is not something that should happen. However, she did end up winning that challenge as well as the first episode. And you would say, well, that was a mistake on her part and that's why she shouldn't win. 
and the only the, the person that should have won that challenge was Yara Sofia. And I would agree to that, except they said that the, they should make a high fashion hot couture garment. And even though that could be really anything, hers is the really the only one that kind of screams that to me. And then the color of that velvet material just matches her skin so beautifully. The makeup is on point, the presentation is lovely. And it literally, to me, it looks like an opening piece for 2009 Louis Vuitton collection. It, 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 it screams that and she, she could... She should have walked for that runway, that outfit, and everyone would gobble it up. It, it is absolutely stunning. Now we go to the patriotic drag, and here we have a very interesting debate, that, which I believe people find somewhat controversial, because she, first of all, RuPaul said that the category was something like Yankee Doodoo, whatever. <laughs> But it's actually patriotic drag, and she wore this kind of like, as she said, a little bit of Native American and a lot of rock and roll that I think that kind of describes it perfectly. And she looks like the biggest superstar on that stage. She looks like a rock star. She looks like she's about to per give you the performance of, of her life. She just looks absolutely stunning, and I think her attitude as she walked, it was just, it was perfection. However, back then it was not controversial. Today it is because people claim it to be cultural appropriation. You know, when you take a part of somebody else's culture and you put it on yourself and you, you know, you, you are kind of using that culture. Some people call it appreciation, some say, you know, appropriation. So tell me, what do you think? To me, it almost looks like an homage to Native Americans. I mean, maybe that's not how she meant it. But it does look cool, uh, however it doesn't describe, it doesn't represent them accurately, so if you are American or Native American, please do let me know what you think is a cultural appropriation. The look itself, if we put that on the side, looks really good. Then we come to the hair ball, where they had to make a hair, a, a, an outfit made entirely out of hair, and also styled to different hairstyles for the runway. So the first theme, I believe, was past inspired so you think one decade from the past you take it and then you style a hair to that fitting for that decade so raja took the 70s and it, 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 actually no she took 60s i believe and it was very yeah she took 60s and it was very mod it was very sexy hot librarian teacher or something <laughs> she looked really good then for the second runaway if i remember correctly they had to do kind of like a red carpet look whatever you imagine it to be and to also again style and style your hair for it and she did a buzz she 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 made such a beautiful cool hot young just fun hairstyle as you can see on the recording and she wore this colorful nice little dress but the the main part of the outfit was the hair and the gloves that matched the shoes it was just absolutely perfect i really want those gloves those gloves look really cool and then for the main look of the hour we have the hair outfit that she made which was so electric so neon it, it looks like it tastes good i feel like it would give me sugar rush if it was edible it was absolutely it was so stunning to see it was so striking it was so booming like your eyes were drawn to it immediately just the bodice the the shape of the dress the hairstyle the makeup the the, the hair piece oh my god everything was absolute perfection i i, I don't get her talent i don't get, i don't get how somebody gets that good it, it is freaking insane she looked so delicious now we come to the dreaded makeover episode where she landed at the bottom and I would have to agree with that because what she made was not good enough only because we have, we expected her to make something great. Because in my opinion I doubt that she had these clothes just laying in her suitcase because they do not fit her, especially, I mean the one that is on her partner. So she probably made it and although they do match each other and her partner did have a decent face, his walk could not sell you anything, like that walk was so stank, it was so bad and horrible. So even that alone was enough to kind of like put her look even even more down than it already was. So she had to lip sync for her life and then she gave us one of the best lip syncs ever, oh my god it was so great. So yeah, this was maybe, this was probably the only look out of 20 something that we have seen on her drag race journey that was not up to par and that is insane because people usually have more looks that are not good enough and she was basically having only this one that was actually bad and everything else was either good or great. 
<laughs> she's insane. Now we come to the money ball and oh my god, we, again, you know we are skipping the one where, she, where they had to dance because it's simply not relevant. Then we come to this party outfit where I think it was like 5 p.m. after party, whatever, and she went with this simple kind of like a party look. We're not even gonna talk about it much because that's not the main point. The main point is what she made because even I know that they were judged based off three looks, but for her to not win with this money outfit is mind-boggling to me. Like, how do you not give win somebody who looks like that? She just, she looked like the biggest starlet about to perform a burlesque number of her life. I don't get, uh, it, she looked so good to take all of those different colored paper money and, and either tear, tear it up or scrunch it and to create that gradient beautiful dress Ooh, that it has a cut in the front for the legs and her legs look great and how she what how she stomped that runaway oh my lord she's the world-class model she really is and she created this garment like this she i was in shock <laughs> she should have won that opinion her walk the sass the feist the, 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 oh my god I cannot stop looking at it till today is one of the best created garments in the history of Drag Race. Like I could name you 10 of them and she would be in 10 of them. She, this is insane. Now we go to the final episode which was kind of like best drag or last impressions, whatever it is. And she went this, what I would, <laughs> to me it kind of looks like World War II cabaret number, but not exactly that, almost Liza Minnelli inspired. Like if you look at the black garment itself, you would think, well, it's not that great, but with the gold chains and how everything was styled and the way she walked and presented it with the face, with that heel as well, it, it was just perfect. She just looked very, very good. And then we go to the reunion where they all got together. Of course, it's a reunion. And she served this beautiful monochromatic look. It was, everything was kind of like a shade of beige. And she had these pieces on the shoulder that matched the pieces on the on her hips and her, the, the best spot was that cinched waist that just gave off such a great illusion with the broadness of the shoulders and the hips with that little waist the entire outfit looked like armor but it was it was such a feisty little piece it was tough it was sturdy she presented it well with the black aggressive eye makeup as well she just she was the best looking again in that reunion uh, 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 she almost always looked the best out of everybody and that is like incredibly hard to achieve and that is not some i don't think that her intention was to look the best out of everyone else she just wanted to look the best she could each time and to achieve that so nonchalantly <laughs> is absolutely insane and with this look we are going to all-star season that happened this year if i look slightly different it's because i had to get up and kind of let my phone cool down <laughs> so it doesn't overheat so this is the part two that i'm recording it's only one video don't worry about it girl i have you i got you i got you boo so here we go so what we're going to talk about first is okay it's the first episode of all stars and we're going to talk about this entrance which is oh my god okay it's to me one of the best entrance looks and one of the best entrance lines ever if <laughs> It was just so perfect the way she just strut, strutted in and she said is somebody you're looking for an icon and then she just kept twirling and her legs looked so good so so the skin was beautiful she just looked great and I know that that look wasn't made for her entrance it was made before because I saw it on Instagram still it it, it was so good it was over the top for, for what it was it, it was the best entrance of that season and in many other seasons it was stunning by the way if i do find the name of the of the creators of the outfit i'm just gonna put them here below the look so you can see it as well because i want to give them props as well because they deserve it okay so and then we come to the runaway which was crowning basically and oh my god okay we have to I'm gonna say something that's dangerous because because Raja has had so so many good looks but this one may be my absolute favorite from her and again it's risky to say that because she had so many great ones but just like her I too am a sucker for historic fashion and to see this fully 16th more so 17th for me inspired friend, rich Frenchman fashion it is absolute I guess, I mean, we can call it that. The, what signified the, the fashion at that time 
was over the top royal appearance, just richness exuding out of you. For rich people, we are talking about them. Um, they just look, oh my god, the, the a lot of fur as well, they would wear a lot of different same. And to see these big puffy sleeves and ruffles, it is so, <laughs> it is so true for the era that she was inspired by. And then, and to, what, to top it off, to see her 11 years again on TV, to kind of give us a throwback to her Marie Antoinette outfit, it is, uh, it's an icing on the cake, it really was, it, it truly is my favorite look probably, and I just wish that she opened that coat up on the runway as well, because as we can see on the picture, it, she, there is so much more to see. Like, I saw it on the runway and I said this is perfection, but then I saw the picture and I was like, oh my lord, she looks great. Like, it was, it is absolutely insane. I'm in love with this outfit. It could be like in my top five ever. I, 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 I oh my god, I adore this and I, I feel like I'm losing words at this point, so I should just move on. But I could sit here and talk for so long. I wish I could just chat to her and ask her, how do you come up with these designs? How are you so creative? How did you, how many years or months, whatever it took you to learn the skills that you have to create? Well, maybe she didn't create this, it was somebody else probably. But still, she could create so much stuff as we have seen and we will see in this season as well. I'm just gobsmacked. I'm... Ugh. Then we go to the next episode and the category and the, the runway theme was pleather, which is fake leather. And I already talked about that. I, and I already talked about this. I will just mention it briefly. I always say, do not buy real leather, especially any new goods. Just buy something vintage if you really want it, but don't contribute to animal killings and cruelty anymore, because a lot of them still do treat animals like that. They don't often take the fur and the freaking especially leather, once the animal is dead, they usually take it, they kill it. <laughs> it's horrible and I laugh because it's truly horrible. And that's why I say at least take leather then, but then that is also bad for the environment. It really is, again, the fashion industry is one of the biggest polluters in the world, so well, we don't. I can't definitively say that one is better than the other, but just, I, I guess, stay away from both of it. <laughs> Try your best, I don't know. Anyway, this look is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I want everything that she owns, but I would I would just probably wear those heels because, honey, she said it's very glam rock and I will tell you that it very much is. That is just more elevated to me and that shoe is especially, for me, glam rock. She looks so sexy, so cool, just pretty cool, sexy and cool. She looks like, oh my gosh, she's the biggest star in that lineup. I'm sorry, like, yes, you had Shea kool and all of that, but Raja is the fashion icon and she is the coolest bitch in the room. She's... Ugh. The combination of this particular, sh these particular shades of red and blue goes really well together. She just looks so cool, so rock and roll, it was insane. And we go to the ball episode and here they had to make the first, well not make, here, here they had to present the first look which was Vena Vite inspired and Raja basically had this look here and it looks literally like Vena Vite. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just a longer dress, but it, like she, it, she looks exactly like her. It was so true to that. Second category, the second category confused me because I didn't, I just didn't understand it right away. But basically, they had to take two things and combine it. So, for example, Raja took Olivia Newton-John, John Waters, so she named it Olivia Newton-John Waters, <laughs> and how she executed that was Olivia Newton look with John Waters mustache. However, I, those mustaches were not visible on the stage, and I thought she looked good, and again, it makes sense because John Waters did literally have pencil thin, pencil thin uh, mustache, but for the stage, for the cameras, they could have been bigger, so we see it, because I think that that's why they didn't give her a win this episode, but they should have, because this gold outfit that she made, which was what they had to make, some kind of outfit, and she came up with this, what I can only see, as like Moschino or more so Schiaparelli outfit, it just looks like it would fit in that brand on the runway lineup. It, it totally can. <laughs> like I, to create this super expensive rich looking top with the pulling of the fabric, with the ruching, and it took time and it took skills. 
nobody else in that room could make that probably in that time or even if they could they would not come up with that or they would not dare to do it because it simply takes too much effort but the payoff is insane because she managed to make it <laughs> by the way do tell me what is, i i don't know in english what is it called that thing that she's carrying around with the glasses on top what is that called just let me know because it is beautiful it is accessorized to perfection her makeup is so stunning the hair also fits very well gray looks great on her but that the makeup and that piece how she was holding and looking at you she just looked super rich she looked like she could buy all of them with the studio <laughs> like she really could that is why she is the fashion icon i'm just always in awe when i see her the only thing that i definitely didn't like were those see-through shoes i am just always repulsed when i see them but they were not super visible on stage and that skirt could have been switched because it's just a little sequin fabric but guess what she said i'm gonna take this because it fits and we're gonna put all of the effort in the top piece because that was the main thing on that runway out even when you look at everybody else and it just looked like a golden dream it was insane like everything else can be simplified when you have something like that on top i am I am so jealous of her skills, I am so jealous of her skills, because I can only sew like the basics, but that is uh, fully mesmerizing. Maybe it could even be in Dior, but I could definitely see it more in Schiaparelli, I am. Uh. The next one we're not gonna talk about too much, because it was the Spikes Runaway, and she looked pretty cool, she looked like a video game fighter character. <laughs> She really could, she would, could be in Mortal Kombat, I just see her doing some sickening fatality with that. Oh my god, she looked really good, the presentation as well was great. Would I switch the mid part and that chested belt? Probably, because I felt like it should have been tighter, but then again, the full outfit overall is really good, I did like it a lot. The next we have Veil vale Runaway, and she... she ugh, okay. I need to collect my thoughts. This is what happened, okay? She took so much fabric, put it on her, made it, she kind of pulled all that fabric at one point in the end, and she, the way she walked, it was perfect. The veil in itself was absolutely stunning. And that piece in the, ad, in the end, which says this word, because I can't pronounce it, means veil in French, and she made it look like the magazine Vogue. And it's just a really cool idea, and she presented it beautifully. And the only thing that was not as good is just that back piece because it was bending, but that was either damaged in tra transportation, if she's even brought it from home, but if she made it there, of course, it's not gonna be as good because you do need kind of more time to make it look super rectangular and super sturdy. And she, you, there is probably not enough good materials in the workroom to achieve that. I am, uh, Oh my god, it, it was just a perfect little, not a little, it was a perfect look and she said it's she's a maximalist and she can take it too far and I felt like she took it into a right direction. <laughs> She needs to go at every Met Gala happening and just outshine everybody because she could totally do that, especially for that guild, especially for this year Guild of Glamour, like she would have killed that, oh my god. She needs to go there every year and she she should, honestly, she should have her own show where she judges young aspiring designers. She really needs to do that because she is fully fit to do so. Next up we have Dolly Parton Spy Runaway and she just looked fully like her. <laughs> like the shape of her body, the way she cinched, it was a gorgeous shape the dress itself was very sparkly with the little fringe and the was it on the arms at the end of the dress it was just lovely it was really really good she looked like dolly there's really nothing much else to say except those nails red nails which turned her on as she said <laughs> it was really good now we go to the next episode where they had to make a rue inspired outfit they had to reimagine it redesign it and they were all given a material of that basically outfit similar you know that color and to me raja got rupaul's look which was the worst the worst for me of all eight because like rupaul looks great but that outfit is literally just a ripped shirt with boots like there is nothing else there so unless you're gonna fully recreate it like trinity did then yes it could work i think raja understood it as just make it look like it's part of that outfit but it's not that outfit just reimagine it slightly and she did and all the way was not the best outfit in my opinion it does kind of to me looks like almost <laughs> like some ritualistic piece and I find it very cool actually but it was just not the best look in the lineup 
but those boots were really good her hair and, and the makeup are always stunning the way she walked was great i just wish it was it had a bit more shape or if she just went full on out and just made everything insanely just insane but it was still good enough it was just not the best like if you take all of those eight looks that they made and put them against each other hers and maybe the Vivians were the two that kind of looked the most similar to the original. So it was a good reimagination. It was just not the best execution. Okay, next up we have again one of the best looks in the history of Drag Race. And they had to have this kind of like a knitted outfit. And although when you look at this golden outfit, you would think maybe it's not knitted, but it actually is. The material is absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. It's mesmerizing. And she again gave us a throwback to her C3PO look on season three. But this one is also that much better. It, it is, she looks like a golden warrior. She looks like almost like a goddess warrior. The way she walked, how she presented it. Oh my god, her walk is always to die for. Those circular pieces are on her, was it on her hands and her neck. Oh my god, I, and the boots, I am... I am always in awe. I don't know what else to say that I didn't say about her. Raja is a true fashion icon and the biggest fashion icon and a model of them all. She's the best designer, she's the most creative, she has the most knowledge. And if you don't see that, then you don't see that. But it's an objective truth. I am... Oh my god, this outfit is the golden fantasy again. Next up, queens had to present their multiple reveals basically, which means two, not just one. And I'm often not a fan reveal, re of reveals because they can look sloppy or they just don't make sense. To me, this made sense because the way I understood it, it looked like uh, inspired by spring, nature, aliens, just, oh, it was very colorful, it was very vibrant, the colors were insane, they were very booming, very striking, when you look at the stage that she's the first one you see. And she also gave us three different shapes, so she went from the big, wide, bell-shaped uh, garment to a short dress to a full catsuit, and that hair at the end, which was just a gray, flat hair, but flat and good, she, she just looked very freaking cool. Flam the flamingo on her head when she walked out, first time I was like, you look stunning. Like, she looked really freaking cool and I'm not gonna cuss, so that's why I said freaking. <laughs> she just looks so damn good. I am, oh my god. Oh. Now we go to the, to me, controversial moment in that episode because they didn't show all of it. So what happened, if the source is correct, which is sourced from Willem, he, we have been, okay, let's start from the beginning. <laughs> this outfit allegedly cost $15,000 only to rent it. And this is why. First of all, the shape of her body with the cinching, it, it, it looks great. Then that sweat is even more exaggerated with the shape of the piece that has been created for her. Well, not for her, it was maybe created before. I'm not sure, but it, it just looks, it, it, it's a perfect piece to put on the body. And it is accessorized with Swarovski crystals, which are very expensive. And if you're wondering why, that is basically just glass. It is made from card quartz, is that what it's pronounced? Quartz, sand, and natural minerals. And at the end, it has like 30 two percentage of lead in it and the reason it's expensive it's because it is being cut very precisely and the shine that is created is stunning and that is why it's expensive and it's also made only in austria that is the you know the original the authentic swarovski crystal and it just takes a lot of time and a lot of time to create only one crystal let alone so many of them it is insane how they're produced and they always use the brand always uses higher quality materials so that's why the price goes up and also the it, there were 200 lasers in that outfit by the way what she wore was 3d printed and also the shoes were made of stainless steel and were made for her and they you could say that they look uncomfortable to where they probably are but the reason for that in my opinion is because you you can't just stroll down the runway it is made for a photo shoot it's made for you to stand there and to look like an actual art piece like a light show you are supposed to be a showstopper when you stand on that stage and let the lights play everything you just look statuesque and that's why the shoe also is there to help you achieve that it is an absolute digital it is an absolute art piece in my opinion and it's just and they say that when she walked out and the way laser beamed created a full light show and they looked freaking sickening and rupaul himself stood up and clapped for her because he was he loved it that much we didn't get to see that and i don't get why she does that but the outfit is insane and then we get to the finale and 
she is literally the only one who understood the assignment and who looked good on that stage. Everyone else looked fine, none of them were almost bad, but she is the only one that looked freaking cool. First of all, let's just go from head to the to, to feet, okay? She she's Raja is somebody who is already tall and lean. So to prolong that structure of her body, they would put this headpiece that would prolong her, as I said, and it, and it just looks pretty damn cool. It was a, she had a whole, the whole appearance of her is very reptilian, alien-esque, and she just looks so regal there. She towered over all of them. <laughs> her makeup was an absolute greatness because the skin looked so clean, so smooth, so clear, so beautiful. It was perfect. And then the highlighter that, that she would put would just shine on the stage beautifully. Contacts with that makeup that was the same color as the outfit was just a beautiful addition. It was astoundingly great. The outfit it is constructed flawlessly. The long fingers are a great addition to all of this. And then her walk, of course, sells all of it. The, the way she behaves like, like she is an actual creature an insect as she said and then those boots which I usually don't the, the shoes I call them hoof shoes right they, I usually don't like them because they can look kind of clumsy or too big on this outfit they were a perfect addition and again it prolonged her even more she towered all of, above all of them as I said and she looked the best it was it was Oh my god, she looked the most interesting and the most unique and she almost always does on every runaway. It is insane. And this outfit reminds me of, was it Alexander McQueen like 2010 possibly? No, no, oh my god, wait, what is, oh, it was two, it was Jean-Paul Gaultier. It was very much the same colors and it was very, and I saw many flower looking pieces and insect looking pieces to me in memory, but it looks like it's literally a closing or an opening piece for the runway of Jean-Paul Gaultier 2014. 2014 spring, I believe. It, oh my god, it, oh my god, you go check it out if you haven't, but I will put some pictures here. It literally looks like that. It should be a piece on that runway. Oh my lord. Now that we've gotten through all of this, I can finally give you my closing final thoughts, okay? If none of the, if all of this didn't convince you that she is the biggest fashion icon of Drag Race in one of the biggest fashion... <laughs> experts in this world then nothing will but okay well let's just put it in drag race she truly is listen there haven't even been that many fashion queens if you're gonna be honest and what truly defines a fashion queen in my opinion is somebody who can think how to, who can design an outfit who can also make it who has the knowledge of fashion and the skills to create an outfit who is good to, at selling the outfit at posing it taking pictures to do a good photo shoot to present it with your runway walk all of those things make you a good at fashion not just buying it and paying somebody to make it for you you need to be able to do all of it if you're gonna claim to be a fashion queen in drag race otherwise you're just a model and there have been many models but not many fashion queens and raja is the biggest of them all the one of the only true ones and i can like i can probably name you 10 to 15 fashion queens throughout how many seasons of drag race but only few of them can actually construct a fully sickening design. And then I can also ask, like, if you don't follow fashion closely, how many models can you name? Three, and one of them is Naomi Campbell. Like, if you are not unique at what you do, if you're not great at what you do, if you don't have that charisma, if you don't have that attitude, if you're just not that special in any way, you're not gonna be a standout and, and, and at all, ever. And in this world, there has only been such a small amount of models because we have so many models that have graced runway in how many decades and only a, like one percent of them is actually famous like and that happens with any really industry like you have to have to be great at what you do and have that uniqueness that edge or as they say that x factor to stand out and majority of people don't have it i probably don't have it so hell but raja does and if she ever sees this and whoever sees this raja you are an absolute fashion icon and thank you for gracing the stage of rupaul's drag race for both times that you've been on the seat on the show please teach us more do not ever stop doing what you do because you are irreplaceable are truly irreplaceable and one of the most memorable I icons on that show and thank you for being who you are you are a piece of art so thank you guys that guys for coming here i really hope you enjoyed this video i really hope a lot of people see this because they need to witness this oh my god i would love nothing more than for raja to see this i absolutely love i absolutely love her and her fashion and 
and I love the show and I love drag queens and I just want to say that and yeah I just I just want people to see this because they deserve to know her she needs to be known everywhere so yeah thank you very much for watching this and I'll see you in the next one I hope that this will come out on Monday if not oh uh, well it's gonna come out someday <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being here, suggest me what else to react to, subscribe while you're here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!